we train a lot of colleagues in our training center and when i meet them afterwards when they have they have already started doing surgeries in their own uh, you know center they tell me one thing that when they approach any case and when they are in difficulty they always hear the voices of our training consultants because that helps developing a thinking process i think what they are hearing is the gist of what our training team was trying to you know tell them so most important thing while you are doing any case for that matter is to understand it step wise so if you are doing a incision always think about the incision make sure that it's correct length when you enter you have to make sure that there is no aqueous leak when you are staining the capsule like this is a very intumescent white cat track this patient had phacomorphic glaucoma now controlled old patient 80 year old so we have already done peripheral bar block and as you can see that the surgeon here operating stained the anti capsule waited for some time so that it takes up the stain also injected some dye under the iris this is a intumescent cat track so first nick a cruciate incision or multiple small incisions made at the center using the right side port and then we you are going to use 27 gauge cannula to aspirate the cortex this is what i will tell as a coach so this surgeon is doing exactly what you know the surgeon has been taught when the surgeon was operating under supervision using a heavy dispersive ovd here to flatten the anterior capsule and then using micro forceps from the small incision now if you have not seen this video capsule axis with forceps just go search on my youtube channel i will also provide a link because when you are doing capsule axis using forceps though here we have negated the intumescence already you can see whenever there is a increasing ripping action it is time to regraft the tear otherwise it is going to go out so again i have rehold the tear now here again you can see the ripping action is increasing to so time to regraft if you miss this points you are going to land up with more complications so just watching the videos also when you are getting trained under supervision you have to develop this thinking so now once the capsule x is done now it's time to think about nucleus management it's intumescent cataract but a old patient so I, the surgeon should expect hard nucleus and uh, that's what it is uh, so you can see the anti ap nucleus was cleaned up here i would say should have cleaned little bit more so get a better visualization particularly for the depth now here the surgeon is planning to to a deep trench and uh, you know i would advise i think the surgeon will also think again to make a longer and deeper trench but try to divide by chopping at the end of the trench but you can see here that the division is not complete but when the surgeon sees that the posterior plate is not completely cut the surgeon decides to go to another point go now little bit deeper into the nucleus there and try to again do lateral separation here one thing the surgeon is doing here is that the surgeon is not trying to separate it uh, you know too much because uh, when when you stretch it too much you must have seen in my older videos i will give a link also that it can cause a pc tear or dialysis so here rightly the surgeon just took a pause injected more ovd uh, brought in the thought process like you know i am in a situation where the posterior plate is not divided so what should i do and as you know our coach would have told the surgeon that's what the surgeon is doing now go deeper and then once the chop is done you can see the deeper hold on the nucleus is very useful and now going deeper and deeper 
until you reach the posterior plate just adjust the focus of the microscope as well so you get a better crack at the posterior plate and that was perfectly done you can see that the chopper went down 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 deeper with you know separating separation attempts were not too i would say vigorous they were small steps of separation going slow 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 now once you have done a partial crack in these kind of situation it's always difficult to break the posterior plate so once the initial part like half the posterior plate was crack again the surgeon tried opposite 180 degree and could get the crack now again trying to chop the partially chopped heminuclear here and uh, as expected it's going to be difficult because once you have done a partial division the nucleus tends to get separated at the same planes so here what has happened is that the initial crack is not till the posterior plate and that's why uh, the surgeon is having difficulty to separate the posterior plate so again of course the surgeon is trying to chop it further and here what uh, happens is that the endonucleus kind of gets separated from the uh, rest of the nucleus which is good because then the surgeon can just emulsify this endonucleus part now again the pupil has gone down so it's again time to take a pause think what we are going to do ahead now we know that uh, uh, there is already there are two heminuclei which are nicely separated here probably i would like to have one more crack so one more division so that will make it three and then i can emulsify the uh, you know these three uh, small pieces i would have definitely like ideally to make maybe five or six pieces but the initial you know lack of depth while doing the trenching and incomplete chop has made it difficult to now further divide i can still divide it if i use the horizontal chop method but uh, the surgeon is not very used to that so here you can see that already i have taken out the endonucleus here so i can do the deep level chopping here using my blunt but was an 1.5 mm chopper there so the surgeon is using the same in this surgery and once uh, we have this one third nucleus separated the surgeon can emulsify it completely surgeon is using centurion machine with torsional feco and balance tip so it makes it very efficient to emulsify these pieces now here the importance of course of the bevel you know the uh, position also you can see that the bevel position is towards the right and surgeon will position all the pieces on that side now here the surgeon is trying to chop so bevel becomes up and uh, trying to chop it here again the surgeon must avoid the you know temptation to try you know vigorous chopping or vigorous lateral separation of these pieces because you could see that once the surgeon tried to push the nucleus the pupil came down it indicates that you are probably pushing the bag and putting stress on the zonule so we don't want any zonular dialysis here so we can just now emulsify the you know the pieces completely without trying too much to do lateral separation or divide these pieces it's fine i think uh, once we use the heavy dispersive ovd here the endothelium is going to be well protected so just now the surgeon as i would have coached the surgeon that just focus on emulsifying these pieces now don't try to do uh, you know the uh, exaggerated attempts for uh, chopping now is just like the complete or you know complete emulsification of whatever pieces we have made make sure that you do the emulsification at the iris plane level so the effect on the endothelium is least you can replenish the visco elastic in between if you feel like like what i am going to do now right perfectly so i think the uh, surgeon is actually hearing my voices took a pause so after the pause again the i think 
now again these are the pieces which are completely not separated so they will be attached at the posterior plate again you have to show a lot of patience here just keep a watch on the posterior capsule as well and you don't want the phaco tip to go through and through these pieces so you can see what my left hand is doing using that chopper i'm just you know nudging this piece around so the phaco tip should not impale and go through the piece anytime that is another place where i can have complications so the surgeon realized that and did it properly just using the left hand sinski or the uh, long chopper patwardhan chopper to nudge the pieces around now the last small piece is uh, there in the side port which was uh, taken out you can see the b well position the surgeon is using the b well to good effect uh, you know it always goes towards the piece the b well has to be towards the piece so that you get best aspiration the small piece which was remaining was taken out by ia you can see the left hand small sinski feeding the i probe with that small nucleus always important to wash out the cortex of course it was a mature cataract but still there will be some thin cortex which is left so always use little bit of low vacuum in the periphery and just try to remove this loose cortex don't do some uh, you know exaggerated attempts to polish these kind of capsules which are already fragile hydro implantation is done by the surgeon here using the irrigation in the left hand and injecting the iol through the main incision using the aspiration port now to nudge this iol in the bag aspirate out the bubbles and there the iol goes into the bag well done you can see that the cd use is quite okay for this kind of hard cataract around 33 cd is going to have this patient is going to have very crystal clear cornea next day that i am sure of because you can see it in the technique that it was very effective at the end and that's something to learn keep analyzing yourself become a self coach so listen to what your coach would have said in that situation thank you so much